folks, how are you doing? It's Des Kays. Um, just been out for my morning run. It's quite frosty out here this morning, actually, for a change. Um, this little video, um, I want to talk about um, a survival kit container that I remember sort of using when I was a, when I was a really little lad, when I was an army cadet back in the day. And, um, like most people I know, and like most people that probably watch my channel, yeah, we've all cut our teeth on Lofty Wiseman books and, you know, fucking Moors Kahansky and, uh, you know, and the likes of Ray Mears and that came later. But um, at the time, I don't really, apart from sort of like the, uh, the Lofty Wiseman book, I don't really remember sort of reading any other survival books, not that my memory remembers that sort of thing. Um, so a lot of the time when we was, um, you know, we never had the internet either. Um, so it was a matter of, you know, we'd, we'd sort of just sort of gather as much information as we could from whatever. And, um, and one thing that, uh, that I always remember from, from being an army cadet, so yeah, you, you, with Lofty Wiseman, for example, it was always the tobacco tin, and even to this day you still get the military using sort of um, containing all their uh, survival kit bits if you like for escape evasion and all the rest of it and they're contained in a tobacco tin and slightly in the pocket and all the rest of it but one bit of kit that um, survival kit that we used to use um, that was introduced to me by an instructor that, um, that passed away at a young age and for people that some people out there that might know him and he was Steve Ryder and he was a fucking blinding instructor at the time anyway and he sort of come up, well, I don't know where he got the idea of using um, baked bean tins if you like and then um, the, I'm not going to talk about what to put in a tin you fucking hell you can go and look on, in, on YouTube and find out for yourself I don't give a shit I'm basically just going to talk about the container itself and um, basically what we used to use was um, used to have a larger, to a larger sort of, uh, what's that, sort of 400 gram sort of baked bean tin if you like. And it had one of those kind of plastic lids that you would put on your uh, pet food if you're only given them half a tin of food, like your cat food and all that sort of stuff. And that would basically sit on top there. Then inside you would have a smaller tin. And um, the smaller tin was normally, I think this one was like an old um, sort of uh, sort of like a pea tin, Marifat sort of pea tin if you like. And uh, what I'd done there was um, I actually drilled a couple of holes in it um, and attached a bit of wire to it to use it as a, as a cooking pot as it were if you like, or to boil water in. Um, and also what I've got sort of wrapped around it, the only thing you're going to see that I've got on it is a bit of some cordage, some really sort of thin string cordage if you like, not paracord or anything like that, so really simple. And, um, and basically you had, I mean if you look at the state of that tin, it's absolutely heaving with rust and stuff, but yeah that was, um, that, was our, uh, that was our means of survival container, what you put in it was down to you, it was normally you know like a little knife, button compass, cotton wool, um, condom to carry water in and maybe a bit more string, shit loads of matches, cotton wool and all the rest of it and um, yeah this was uh, this was the kind of uh, receptacle that, that was quite popular. It's a little bit bulky I suppose to stick in a breast pocket or whatever but um, when you were sort of like normally as an army cadet you was never really out your webbing you kind of in a way you kind of sadistically like wearing your webbing I think so you'd normally have that stuck in a pouch and then obviously when you needed to bug out you're on escape evasion or whatever you'd have your survival kit and your means of you know your water and all that kind of stuff on you already but plus you know having a little survival kit in a tin such as this well, I found it a little bit more practical and a bit more useful than having a, than having a, a tobacco tin but you know I'm not going to get into a debate about it it really is just basically something a bit of nostalgic uh, nostalgia, nostalgia, really, if you like. I mean, that was the kind of uh, you know survival tin that was used. I mean, now we've got possible pouches and and all that kind of stuff. But um, I think sometimes people forget the likes of stuff like this. You know, everyone wants to be quite authentic and use leather and and canvas and and be like the voyagers and all those kind of people. But something quite as simple as this you know it's, it's pretty much free really and it you know apart from buying the, 
you know, it's recycling at its best as it were. And as I say, you've got the lid on top there, which keeps everything nicely waterproof and contained away. It doesn't really rattle too much. And it's uh, quite a handy little bit of kit really. So uh, yeah, that's it really. I just wanted to sort of show you this survival kit, or uh, not the not the contents, I'm not interested in the contents because you can put in there what you like, but basically just about the container itself. Alright, so um, there it is folks. Alright, so subscribers as usual, always welcome. There's Catties on YouTube and um, on Instagram as uh, There's Catties as well. Uh, Big Me, Bushcraft by There's Catties. Alright, so uh, yeah, up the woods tomorrow. So I'll probably be knocking out some more videos, bits and pieces. Alright, so have a cracking weekend. Take care and be safe. Alright.